Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name's Richard Cruz, and joining us today from the Australian Army is Major Mick Cook. We warmly welcome the family of Flying Officer Richard K. Oliver, whose story will be told shortly. We are very pleased to welcome the following to the ceremony today. Lieutenant General Chris Whitecross, Chief of Military Personnel, Canadian Armed Forces, accompanied by Rear Admiral Peter Wolski of the Royal Australian Navy. Air Commodore Alan Clements, Commandant of the Australian Defence Force Academy. Staff, Officer Cadets and Midshipmen of the Australian Defence Force Academy. And finally, the members of the Blacktown Totally and Permanently Incapacitated Association. We welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria and RSL Queensland, who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony around Australia. This evening, reads will be laid by family and visitors, as well as students, on behalf of the following schools. From South Australia, Westminster School, Marion, and from Victoria, St Joan of Arc School, Brighton, and St Simon's Primary School, Roeville. Could I ask you to please stand and join in singing the National Anthem. If you're able, please be seated. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's first World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozieres, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families, friends and all Australians could mourn their loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight we'll read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and operations over more than a century. But first we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Wreaths and floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today, we pay tribute to Flying Officer Richard K. Oliver, who was killed on active service with the Royal Australian Air Force. Born in Stanmore, in Sydney's inner west, Richard K. Oliver was the son of Claude and Ethel May Oliver. As a young man, he attended Dulwich Hill Primary School and Canterbury Boys High School. He was a cub and a boy scout at Dulwich Hill and attended the jamboree that was held in Bradford Park. He also enjoyed ice skating and playing ice hockey at the Sydney Glaciarium and taught ballroom dancing. When he was 18 years old, Oliver worked as a clerk at WD and WO Wheels Tobacco Company. He had previously served in the militia in the 1st Australian Motor Division headquarters. After joining the RAAF in October 1942, Oliver began training as a pilot. In June 1943, he embarked for Canada, where he undertook further specialist training. While on leave there, he learned of a dinner being held in honour of Australian airmen returning to Australia, one of whom was his very own brother. Squadron leader, Les Oliver, DFC. Richard crashed the dinner and spent the evening with his brother, but this would be the last time they saw each other. Oliver arrived in England in December 1943. As part of the Empire Air Training Scheme, he was one of almost 27,500 RAAF pilots, navigators, wireless operators, gunners and engineers who joined squadrons based in Britain throughout the course of the war. He undertook further training before being posted in January 1945 to number 463 Squadron, which flew the four-engine Avro Lancaster heavy bomber. Oliver was flying with the squadron on the 2nd of February 1945 during a raid on Karlsruhe, Germany, when the Lancaster he was piloting was shot down. Oliver was killed as were four of his Australian crewmates. Two other crewmates, one Australian and one British, managed to survive the crash and became prisoners of war. Oliver was 21 years old. His body was recovered and is buried beside those of his crewmates in the British and Commonwealth War Cemetery in Dernbach, southern Germany. Oliver's name is listed on the Roll of Honour to my left, along with around 40,000 other Australians who died while serving in the Second World War. His photograph is displayed beside the Pool of Reflection. This is but one of the many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Flying Officer Richard K. Oliver, who gave his life for us for our freedoms and in the hope of a better world. Please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. As we that are left grow old, age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
lest we forget. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub at Gallipoli with his poor tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain has thought in his last moments, well, well it's over. But in Australia they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes the last post-ceremony. We thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial and wish you a very good evening. Thank you.